video is sponsored by Voxy. Hello and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast with me, Tommy Kelso, Paul Hipkiss and John Graham. Good evening, guys. How are we all? Good evening. All good? Good evening, Tommy. Good, 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 good guys. Yeah, very good. Uh, in today's episode, we'll be discussing the purchase of the Birmingham Wheels site ahead of the second open house in April. Uh, now, of course, this has spurred a lot of interest amongst people on social media. Uh, because obviously new sites obviously means a new stadium, uh, sorry, potentially a new stadium on the horizon. And Birmingham Live reported today at 10.38 this morning, rumours of a new multi-sports super stadium. Uh, it's a very exciting idea, but let's jump straight into it. Uh, Paul, coming to you first, what's your initial thoughts on the uh, purchase of the site? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a very exciting announcement. It's um, obviously something that uh, appeals to a lot of people and the thought of you know, that in the future is very exciting, like I've said, but a bit like John said before we went live, you know, I can't see past Friday at the moment. It's, it's mm. hard to see past Friday, isn't it? And, and then Monday, you know, we just want to get this season out of the way now and survive. And then I think everything, you know, things like this then will be even more exciting. But right now, we just need to focus on staying in the league, don't we? And um, then, you know, I think we can focus on other stuff as well as... Uh, the new stadium, but the fact that it's even in the conversation and it's been announced and this is the plan is obviously, you know, really exciting news. It really is. And when you think about what they've done to St Andrews as well in a short space of time with this on the agenda as well, that's even more impressive, isn't it? Mm. No, 100%. Yeah. John, you were saying before we joined the, uh, before we came on, yeah, that you were been massively impressed with all the owners apart from one particular mess up from the board and everything which is obviously the Rooney appointment but with this news coming out does it still maintain that opinion that you're very pleased with the owners and the work that they've done 100% I, I think um, you've only got to see just as you you come to St Andrews now you, you sort of feel a bit of pride in the club I mean you know they've sort of done all the bits that have needed be, to be done for you know years and years and years and just the, the LED screens in, on the on the cop as you go go into the ground um trying to do things with street food and they've obviously listened to the supporters a lot they've done something about it it's really visible and i think that's a hit with the supporters because it's always good to be heard which uh i think has been lacking for for many many years so i think they've always looked to do the right thing um and this is just uh i think an example of hate to use the word project but let's go with the word project um of where they want to take the club long term um Mm. And maybe it's it's quite a clever piece of timing. Um, obviously, everybody is focused on the short term, but, you know, we've all been fans for many, many years. And, you know, it's not just about this season. Of course, we want to stay up. It's going to be really important. But it's important that we've got a vision. Uh, we've been lacking that as well. You can't just go from season to season hoping for the best. You know, there's got to be some concrete foundations, which, unlike our current ground, we we haven't got. Um, and you know, they've, they've obviously plowed a lot of money into the grounds, um, and fair play, you know, mm. it, as I said, the, the whole atmosphere and everything they've done about the, you know, the pre-match activations, we're actually punching our weight, I think, as far as, you know, the brand and everything that we stand for. I just think that, um, and I, I don't think, uh, I was saying to my lads this morning, you know, I love St. Andrews. I've had some just amazing, amazing nights there. I really have. And, and Saturday afternoons, where, whenever it's been, just had the best times. Had some absolute horror stories as well. <clears throat> but, uh, but I think that, you know, time is probably now. Um, they can't really do a lot with that, with the current sort of, you know, the land that they have, you know, with the limitations you've got sort of railway ends. Then you're sort of the main stand, you're encroaching on people's houses. It's just not really a, a site that I don't think you can develop. It's a pain in the yeah. ass to get to. Um, so as far as that emotional bond is concerned, it'll always be there. But ultimately, it's with the badge, not necessarily with the grounds. Mm -hmm. And um, I think fair play. I, I'm, I'm really chuffed that they're looking at it. You know, yes, it's been announced today, but it's going to be crikey, you know, at least five years down the line, I'd say. And there's, there's a lot to be done on the field before we before we move in, that's for sure. The, 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 sorry, Tommy. The journey, the journey is like absolutely horrible to St Andrews and back mm. as it is right now. Um, so the thought of like, let's say, you know, we do get really, you know, big and and, and much, much, much better. If we are filling a fifty thousand all seat stadium, um, then I can't imagine, you know, what the journey home is going to be like. I'll probably have to take a sleeping bag or something. <laughs> 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 Kicking out on the train at the end of the game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Do you think? Sorry, go on, Tommy. Go on, mate. Do you, do, I was just going to ask, do you think there is anything in the timing of this announcement? Because obviously there's the open house that's coming up, but they're going to be talking about ambition anyway, but also as well with the stuff on the pitch as well. Do you think with this sort of new right idea to keep the fans excited whilst we're in a bit of relegation scrap, do you think there's an op- Do you think they've seen an opportunity to make it now for this purchase rather than perhaps at the end of the season? Well, for me, 100%, you know, they're... They're obviously really they're good operators. They've they've demonstrated that, as I said, they've done and said all the right things since they've they've sort of taken over. Um, there's been a lot of bad news over the last when ever since Tony got ill, the results have gone pear shaped, um, which then brings the Rooney thing back into the equation, which they obviously just want to forget that ever happened. And I think you know that sort of you know momentum works both ways. And I think the sort of the bad vibes around the club and maybe I've even seen people questioning the ownership, which I think is just wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but I think, you know, they, they want to try and take control of the narrative a little bit, you know, um, look at, as I said, look at the future, try and get something positive there and really put a marker down to the fans to say they're here to stay and probably appreciate where we're at right now. But right now isn't the future of the club. And I, I 100% don't put this down to a coincidence in any way, shape or form. Mm, no, no. Tommy, you're only, what, 22? 21, I am. 21, wow. Mm-hmm. So what would be your top three moments at St Andrews in your life so far? You know what, there isn't there isn't that many, because obviously um, <laughs> old Blues games, you know, you considering like the runs to the old cup finals and everything, it would have gotten much closer to those times in um, like the... 80s or uh, the 70s and stuff like that but I think um, I don't know because a lot of the great games I've been to have been away <laughs> in most recent years <laughs> so none really at St Andrews in recent years but I'd say the West Ham Carling Cup semi-final is probably up there it's probably the best actually you can't really argue with that and also beating the Villa in the quarterfinals I'm struggling for a third though I don't mm. know really um, perhaps I, I think maybe if we're speaking on like how I felt the game was going to transform us, maybe the Leeds game at home, because there was something at the start of the season where you felt like everything was going so well, you can't see where it's going to go wrong. And naturally, I should have known that looking back at this point in the season, that something would have definitely gone wrong, whether it would have been catastrophic or very small. You know, it was just been blues that way, really. But yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it's tricky to think of that third one. Maybe yeah, that yeah, Leeds yeah. game. I don't know. No. Don't question to you, John. I know you and me are a similar age, aren't we? But what would you? What would you? What would you? Um, moments. Well, any any Villa victory at home, obviously, just yeah. you bundle bundle those together. There are many, but bundle them together. Uh, Bruges at home, um, never never experienced anything like that at St Andrews mm. when we equalised. That's true. Um, yeah, Ipswich um, semi final. Um, was good, you know. We absolutely drummed them, and you know there was a, there was a bit of work to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's lots of I think memorable games, but probably going a little bit into maybe moments and periods of time, and sort of times where you know turning up to St Andrews expecting to win, which didn't happen very often, but under Row it did for a season. Yeah, and I was a season to get older with my kids then, and we had we had the you know just a fabulous season of you know just going there expecting. Expect expecting something positive, so mm. uh, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll certainly remember that season and, and, and any game, not necessarily for the right reasons, but you know, Stoke at home, pitch invasion, utter chaos. Um, there's been a few of them. Um, so yeah, the, going on a Tuesday night when there's four thousand in, which I did on the. I mean, it was just it's chalk and cheese now to to to, to what we experienced, but. Um, yeah, like I said, some amazing times, some memorable moments for good and bad reasons. But uh, I like it's just, just things like I know <laughs> sound like a real old fucking. Why <laughs> can I get a pie without leaving <laughs> ten minutes before half time, please? Oh, um, and it, it doesn't help, you know. I do quite a few stadium tours when I can be to the new Spurs grounds, and you're just like, <laughs> mm. wow, it's yeah. just so just it's just something I think that. You know, as I said earlier, we some amazing, amazing experiences at Blues. But, uh, you know, I was a mascot in 1984. You know, 
what scored a penalty against David Seaman. You know, that's how old I am. Um, <laughs> so it, it does give me a lot of uh, amazing memories. But uh, we we have to move on. I think there is like it's a bit of a millstone, to be honest. It's just. Whenever you know we've said typical blues before the the, the pod, I think we just need a fresh start. You know, we need. There's been so much mm. negativity for, you know, not just the last ten years, but even when the goals were in, a lot of fans wanted them out. Just some stability. It'd just be lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I think true, yeah. One, one, of, one of my first St Andrews memories was when we played uh, Forest in the FA Cup. In I think it was about eighty. When was that? About eighty Fifth round. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I nearly got. I was only like, I was only about ten, and I nearly got crushed. Like my dad had to carry me over. Yeah, like, to get out. it was just horrendous. Um, I think we lost one 0 Didn't we? Gary Crosby scored. If I yeah, it was. Yeah, and it, it, that was one of the first. I think there was about twenty five thousand on. Yeah, and we were used to having like half of that, if that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the difference was just, you know, when we, yeah. you know, when there was a, a bit of a surge, it was yeah, not yeah, not yeah, ideal. Yeah, definitely, but, yeah. yeah. And then 91 as well against Brentford in the um, Leyland Daft Cup as well, uh, the first leg. I think Christ. it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. You know, most of the teams are talking about, you know, that 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 decisive win to get a promotion or win the league. Yeah. We're Here in the fucking Leyland Daft, Daft, yeah. Daft honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honest to God, honestly, yeah. what we like. I love, yeah. I love, I love Trevor's reign as well and the, the wins over Wolves and... And mm. uh, the baggies as well. When Dealey scored that goal from running from the halfway line against the baggies, that was great, weren't it? And as you say, John, as well, Ipswich in the cup, and you know, even in the Premier League as well. You know, the Wolves game sticks to mind as well when Phillips got the brace, and we that's beat, a great goal, yeah. Yeah, mm. when they when they thought they'd won it one 0 and uh, mm. we came back and won two one, which was amazing. Um, but obviously, the first one for me has to be the, the number one for me has to be that first Monday night game. Against Villa when we beat them three 0 it was just incredible that night. <laughs> yeah, that is I mean, true. you're right, John. Any win over Villa, but that first one for me was just extra special. You know, it really demonstrated like the. I mean, obviously, I wasn't alive at that time, but even just watching in, you, it demonstrates the amazing atmosphere that St Andrews has on people because. I think you could put any team in that stand and you can have the amazing feel because I think what's interesting to know about um, people's ideas for new stadiums and everything, I think a lot of Blues fans are wanting the same feel at least for the stadium because it's quite compact but it's also quite spacious. So you've got a lot of the pitch to look at and you've got like a lot of space on the other side as well. I mean, the main stands are fantastic stands to sit in because you, you look at the uh, the cop and the Tilson and the railway end as well is amazing to see as well, really. But it it, it, it it sort of keeps all the atmosphere in as well so it doesn't get lost. Like when you go to these um, new bowl-shaped stadiums, they're fantastic for like the viewing and everything. Like I remember going to... Uh, West Ham's ground when we played them in the FA Cup a couple of seasons ago. And it's great. Yeah. You can get a fantastic view of everything from wherever you sit in the ground. But when you're singing, like the it the, like the atmosphere, it seems to just disappear. It's like you have to really shout just to keep it going a bit louder and everything. But with St Andrews, because it's quite com- close and compact, you can just hear everything. And it, it, it seems like that is built within us as well as fans particularly. And like when people are saying like... Um, what we want from stadiums there's like there's discrepancies over little bits here and there but a lot of it is down to the very core details of St Andrews really we I, I really think the owner should tap into that if they want to rebuild the stadium uh, yeah. out in Birmingham Wheels but um just before we quickly move on to the uh a bit more into the conversation I do just want to point out uh, another tip from Edgy 212 thank you very much mate I really appreciate you keep on coming back and donating to us man uh, donating, we're not a charity. Um, they're just uh, giving us a little bit of money. Well, <laughs> actually, no, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's have a look through some of the comments before I get myself cancelled. Um, do you think <laughs> the new stadium, when it be built, will be used for other sports uh, at St Andrews? Uh, throwing that question out there to one of you guys. Yeah, I, I think... Uh... I mean, again, said it before the pod, you know, bearing in mind these American owners and that they're not going to do things half arsed that I think they're going to shove all in. Um, mm. uh, I mean, again, using the Spurs grounds as an example, that has been designed to keep the, the, the noise in. I think you're absolutely right, Tommy. I, I think these guys will, they'll, they'll, I think they'll design something to keep that sort of St. Andrews atmosphere. I've got no doubt, but I think it will be, you know, multi-purpose. 
would they think about, and I think there probably will be Tom Brady, NFL games in Birmingham. Anything's possible, you know. It's a blank mm. piece of paper. And um, it's one of those, it's got to be a 365 um, commercial entity, you know, whether that be, you know, various sports, hopefully things like concerts and just a proper stadium where, you know, from an FFP point of view and profitability, it's all gonna it's all gonna count, it's all gonna be it's all gonna be important. And um yeah, I, I think we can see something that will be completely uh multifunctional and uh it'll need to be because it's not gonna be cheap, is it? Mm, that is no. true. Yeah. yeah. They'll have concerts on there as well, won't they? And stuff like that. Yeah. And, I yeah. think that's something that we can really tap into as a club, you know, because I, I think as well, like when they say like multi sports arenas, but like concerts and, you know, other things like that, they're really just as important, you know, because, y- you know, you, you might not be able to attract a big boxing fight. You might not be able to attract a big NFL game. But if you can get somebody to play in Birmingham, you know, artists are always traveling the country to play in different events, you know, in different venues so like if we have a proper multi-purpose built arena really because it's not well, it's a stadium but it's an arena really at the same time then you know people will come and use our facilities for that you know because if we can have um, a disassembled pitch as well which i think would yeah. be really key for a multi-sport stadium then you can have i don't know ed sheeran on there or uh, all those new bands as well. I have absolutely no idea about modern music. <laughs> Honestly, my knowledge on this sort of stuff is not very good. It's football and maybe a little bit of boxing. That's it, really. Um, well, but Cov, Cov have done it. You know, Cov have, mm. you know, it's a bit of a, it's been a bit of a disaster, that stadium, really. But mm. they have put on massive concerts there. Um, yeah, Rolling, Rolling Stones were there, weren't they? Not yes. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, I, I think it's just a given. It's just what else do they do? They could put a casino on there. Do they put a hotel on there? I mean, there's there's so many opportunities. Mm. Um, so uh, again, uh, there, there'll, there'll be no stone left unturned with these. Got like, there's there's no doubt. It'll be it'll be right. something we could be. I have no doubt, immensely proud of, and it'll be a bit of a Christ, you know. I think a bit of a pinch me moment when we when we play there for the first time because you know we've just gone through three seasons of a half built stadium, so we yeah our expectations are managed at this point. Yeah, so, I think uh, anything you can give us really that looks new and has a nice good feel to it, we'll be happy with really because anything. <laughs> over the things that we've had over the last few years, we'll be happy with a, just a stadium, really. To yeah, be honest. yeah. Give us a tin shed with a football pitch on, we'll be happy with it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has there been any talk as to what's going to happen to St Andrews once they start this development? I don't think there has, but I, I would assume housing. Like, it, it's, it's quite obvious, you know, there's a lot of, um, I mean, like where I live up north, there's like any bit of land they'll be destined to get on for a uh, housing estates or anything it's just it, it's in demand at the moment so that's probably what i imagine it will be for uh, or maybe shopping centers or something like that because yeah could it not be the training ground or you know um mm, i mean it'd be great if it was it just depends on what the i don't know it depends if someone else comes in with a better offer to buy up the ground or whatever yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't i, I would don't, love it i don't think the decision has been made on the Real estate, no, yeah. real estate value of St Andrews. Yeah, you know, it just—it's not like Highbury. You know, no, there, exactly. there, you know, there's not going to be a clamour for people to live in small leagues. No disrespect, but <laughs> they, they, it just—they're just not. You know, it's—it's no. it's one of those that they're not sort of saying, well, you know, we sell the ground, we can sort of get eighty percent of the funding to build a new one. It just—I think they've just looked at it a practical perspective and said, from a future income generation point of view, what does St Andrews look like versus a new site? And the new site is going to be by a factor of about 20 to the good. So I think it's just bit, a bit of cut your losses. And, yeah, I'm sure housing will will, will go on it. But, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit out of the way. And like I said, I, you know, it's it's not like it's in central London where it's going to command an absolute fortune. So yeah. I, I think it's just they need they just want to get out. Yeah, yeah. It'd be good, it'd be good if they could make the journey like I've already mentioned, like a bit less painful, you know, especially when we start, it starts to be a bigger complex than that, you know? Mm. Was... Well, I think the, um, with where the stadium could potentially be, again, this is all just um, basic speculation at the moment. Um, nothing has been clarified. Um, where it is, it's right next to a train station that runs directly into New Street. So you can have 
um, you know, of all the trains coming in from the south and from the north as well, you can have people travel into the stadium very easily by train, um, which I know is a very preferred uh, method of travel by away fans. And also it gets you directly into the city centre as well, and that keeps you connected with um, the things in there as well. Because I know a lot of people like to go into town before the game, and then obviously the walk from uh, the t- from town centre into into the small leaf is a bit of a trek you know it's about half an hour walk really and you know you could take a taxi for this you just put wasting your money but a, a two quid train ticket or something like that straight into the ground it's like literally a five minute walk from the train station so yeah. there is connectivity that is for sure and i feel like with a bigger fan park as well that could potentially be on the site then yeah. you, you open up in more revenue ways as well then which i think is what um you know knighthead have just been like immediately trying to get back into the club, you know, because obviously they've had all the investments back into the club, but they want that to return as well, like any business would really. So, yeah, I think that there's opportunities for um, better travel and better ways of travel as well, because car parks surely will be on their agenda, obviously with all the, um, how people's cars have been nicked as well, you know, in front of the cars have been ripped off. And yes, just, least. just talking shorter term, do you think it would be a good idea if the club was to put on a, say a fan park or something in St Andrews for the Euro, for the England games? There is, well, that's a great shout to be fair. I mean, the, the, I've got a few notes from the last Open House. We will talk about that a little bit in a second. Uh, but obviously the last Open House was in November, the uh, first one was. But they did speak about um, fan park, if I can find it where it was in the, uh, I think it's in the infrastructure plans that yeah, the, yeah, they're Niff spoke it. about. Yeah. They're, they're definitely doing it. De- yeah, I, I, I know that they've made a start with it on the... Um, uh, outside the cop with all the um, uh, grill house and sort of uh, st- street kitchen food stuff and that, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good idea, you know, because it, it would keep the it would keep the interest around the ground as well, wouldn't it? It's not just for match days; it'd be for other events as well, which would appeal for people who would be more inclined to then come to concerts at the Blues and stuff like that. Yeah, with, with my sales head on, and that's my profession. Um... You know, I, I, I can just see a big opportunity for the club there because if you can mm. get all your season ticket holders together and all Blues fans together that support England as well, do you know what I mean? Why can't we all mm. jump up and down and celebrate together? Do you know what I mean? When we score in that final, hopefully, and <laughs> when we equalise yeah. against Iceland and round yeah, sixteen, <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be good if we could all share the moment <laughs> together, wouldn't it? Don't you think? You know, yeah, hundred percent. I think most people yeah. would do that as well. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they put like a massive screen up in front of the right, you know, in front of the Gil Merrick. You know, mm. and and got some good flooring on the pitch or something like like for it like you like you have at a concert. Um, yeah. And then I think that could really work, and maybe get some stands around the pitch with the street food and the and the bars. You know what I mean? When the weather's yeah. nice for as well, it could really work. It could really bring some money into the club, couldn't it? I think if we get further into the competition as well, it would massively generate the revenue sales as well. Because the thing is, I've seen it with Liverpool when they made the Champions League final a couple of seasons ago. You mm. know, they've always had that massive fan base, so they'll turn up for whatever. But when it's a big event like a Champions League final, they will come to those events, you know, that you put on, you know, they're obviously putting yeah. the Champions League game on. But like if England make the final and say, look, it's like a quid to enter, you get all this food, all this drink, you know, you can go and watch the game. All together, a big fan park yeah. at St Andrews. I think it. I think it would work, you know. And they they spoke on this um, other things as well around the ground, really. With um, obviously you mentioned the fan parks as well, but with the new sound system, um, which I don't know, has it been installed yet? I don't think it has. But they, they've obviously done the new floodlights as well. There's uh, Wi-Fi that they're putting in, uh, new LED screens that will go beside the main stand and uh, both uh, both sides of the main stand, so it'll have more of a um, have a better effect, really. I think, I think that they're definitely setting it up for being an arena more than a stadium, you know, because like old fashioned football stadiums are going out of fashion, um, which I'm not really a big fan of, really. I prefer to keep that traditional look to a football stadium in particular, but I have no objection to like the sort of modernization of how you get your secondary information i would almost say because like you get the advertising on the boards and everything and then the the pa systems and everything so that needs to be improved and we know this from experience as well like the board is always too bright and the the sound from the pa is always too crackly and too horrible really it's just they're improving on those things but i think this is what they're going to mention in this um, upcoming open house is the fact that they want this ambition to be worthwhile you know because yeah. they, they can put all the money into it as, like, as they like, but if you don't pay off or 
it, it has an impact with what we want and what the customers get, then it'd yeah, be but, a waste of time. But ultimately, they they control that. So you know, the people that come and fill a fan zone, the people that buy more season tickets, are driven by what what decisions you're making. And again, don't want to go back to Rooney, but I'm going to use it as a a key element to it all. That decision derails everything. Mm. And you can be as, you know, you can have as much money in the world as you want. But when you, it's like any business, if you make something as, as just cataclysmic as that, as a decision that, you know, you in the first part of the season, fans were engaged. They loved it. It felt like it used to. Everybody was gushing over it. it was, they had it. They had mm. absolutely everything. Now, I'm not saying that uses for the answer because it's really easy to say that now. But he probably earned the right. Either they were going to sack him, they should have sacked him the two games before, you know, the two games that he won. Or you've got to give him a bit of time because we had a bit of momentum and then make whatever decision you want at that point. But, and, and I think people would have accepted Rooney a little bit more if we were on the arse end of a bad run, but we weren't. Mm. And just, you know, the it's that ripple effect of you make that decision. And over time, people won't buy season tickets and they won't stay behind and they won't do lots of things that you can spend all the money in the world, have amazing street food. But if mm -hmm. you haven't got that sort of, you're up for it and you're motivated when you actually go to the ground and you just rock it up because it's blues and I turn up and I love it. And you know you're probably going to lose and served up with some pretty ordinary stuff by a manager and got a clue. You're not mm. going to spend your money. because you're just gonna No, you're right. You're, you're going right, to be yeah. absolutely demoralised and you're just going to sit there waiting for it to finish. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've experienced that enough times, haven't we, over the last yeah. four in particular now. Um, <laughs> but that, that, is, that is what it all boils down to, isn't it, John? The results on the pitch, you know, that is what keeps the heartbeat of a football club going. That's what we all go there for, isn't it? The three points. Well, I, the... I, well, I, I just think, yes, three points, 100%. But just having what we had at the start of this season, a, a collective togetherness mm. uh, just a belief uh, that we'd got our club back and there was a bit of passion there and okay you know it wasn't brazil 1970 but we never have been you know no. but it was there we had it and it, mm. it just it for it to be taken away it was just like this the divide be... wasn't there at the start no, of the season was like, it? you know this better be good this better be good you know you put your balls on the on the line here it better be good and it, and it went pear-shaped and they've lost momentum and they know mm. that well, they've a hundred percent lost momentum, and uh, you know everything they've said at the you know previous open hours and what you said, Tommy. They're probably delivered against all of it. They're not bullshitters. No, they're, they're, they're in it for the right reasons, and I love them. Mm. And you know everybody makes a mistake, and they they just made a, a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was almost a carbon copy of Rabbit Zola, wasn't it? You know, that's exactly yeah, yeah. Same, same sort as well. It was a bit earlier actually. It was October, wasn't it, when we really came? Was it around October time? October, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's done now anyway. It's just a shame that Tony got unwell because if he hadn't, then I'm I'm certain that we wouldn't be where we are now. You know, and it wouldn't even have any relegation concerns. But it's just unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, and um, obviously his health's more important than anything. So hopefully we can see him back on the training ground with the lads in the summer. You know, and back in the dugout for next season mm. in, in the championship. That's the main thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think with the um, open house that's coming up, though, like what can we expect? Because obviously, I don't think I don't think are any of us going. Uh, Blues Focus, we are going as a, a as a brand, but I, I'm not going. I don't think. Well, at the moment, I'm not going. I haven't heard anything further on, but I, I don't I, think I, any of us are going, are we? I, I was at the last one. Yeah, we were all. I was at yeah. the last one too, but I for the upcoming one, we have we heard, heard any invitations no, that we yet. might be getting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I'll keep checking the porch for is it. Is this some really bad attempt to plead? Okay, you know, call me, call me whenever you want. You know, I'm desperate for a ticket. Um, I'm on speed dial. Um, yeah. No, it's just, it's mostly on the fact that I just wondered whether what we might be able to expect really from the next one because ambition, it's quite a broad sort of statement of what we could expect really because. I don't know, really. It's like, are we talking about ambition off the pitch? Or are we talking about ambition on the pitch? You know, because the ambition, surely, for the, on the pitch is just to stay up, really. But 
I don't really, it, it feels like, because obviously the first one was called Transformation. So you, you understand that one a bit better because obviously Rooney had just been put in charge. And then, so this is the transformation of the team. We just had all this renovation across the stadium and everything. So it's it's going to be like, you you know what to expect, you know, and you've been experiencing it over the last few um, months and everything. But I don't know about this one. What's I don't, it called? It's called Ambition. So I, okay. I'm not I'm okay. not entirely sure what they're getting at here. With it. I, I just think it's going to be really difficult as much as, oh, yeah, again, right thing to do, good to speak to people, um, mm. put, put yourself out there. That, that's what all the fans want. They want that access. It's just, it ain't great timing. But just because, yeah. you know, we're right in the middle of it and whether we like it or not, it, it is all short term right now. And the ambition, uh, you know, we could probably say, we could list down over the next five years what their ambition is is as an ownership on the pitch and off the pitch. I think we could probably all nail that within the next five minutes. And mm. I think that, you know, they genuinely will strive to do that. Mm. But, you know, if there's a lot of fans in the room, it's going to be, how's Gary got on for the last 10 days? That's just that the ambition is, you know, championship football. That yeah. and, and, and I think it will be difficult for them to try and switch the narrative past this season. They yeah. will do it, but I think there's going to be a bit of shuffling going on. And, and you know, that's amazing. But which, mm. again, you know, unfortunately, that, that's that been sort yeah. of... Yeah, uh, it could have been... Ambition could have been saved till the uh, third one, perhaps, you know, just before the start of the next season, because it would have been perfect timing for that. But I don't know, ambition when you're right towards the end of the season and in a relegation, but obviously they've planned this months ago, but to still have it, in a position where you're still not entirely sure whether you're going to be safe, safe or not, then don't know that, that something isn't quite connecting yeah. with this one like it was, like, like it felt like the last one. You know what I mean? Because when they announced the last one, every Blues fan was like, "Wow, this is going to be fantastic!" And it was fantastic. You know, it was very transparent, very open, and very insightful. But this one, I, I can't help but feel that it's going to leave us feeling with a few unanswered questions, perhaps. Wait, so yeah. should you just call it? Don't panic. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Stop worrying. <laughs> We're going to be safe. You. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're just on a turbulent flight at the minute, aren't we? You know, there's a lot of turbulence mm. and we just need to get through this cloud, if you like, and come out the other end and survive. That's the main thing. Um, yeah. I'm excited. I really am excited for the summer and the next transfer window, if we do, because I think, uh, you know, we're going to have a change in fortunes, hopefully. Yeah, to be fair, Paul, turbulence is probably better. I think that that frames it. Yeah, that, that mm. should be the that should be the word. That should be the title of the open house. Title yeah. of the open house. Yeah, <laughs> turbulence. Please fasten your seatbelts. We're going through a turbulent <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah. I think it probably should have been more on passion or something like that. I, I can't. I'm struggling for words that would define where we are at the season. I think don't panic is quite well good though. Right? Determination would have been another good word for it, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I I just don't I don't want to dig them out because I I completely understand that this would have been months in the plan months in planning this would have been, and I I imagine what they'll be putting on offer will be fantastic once again you know because like like you were saying earlier John you know they haven't put a foot wrong off the pitch it's no. just the work on the pitch that just hasn't been up to standard just yet um so I don't know I think they just I I, I personally think that they need more concentration on exactly where we are right now you know we can't be looking further ahead to oh, maybe if we survive then this and if we don't survive then this it needs i get that that's how business works and everything they need to look further on into the future for the football club but it's we're in a very current stage as a football club and as a very current period of time where we need to focus on the next game then the next game then the next game until we are safe really mm -hmm. oh, okay. pretty cool. yes go on, go on, no, I, was gonna say, I, I think that you know they're as you said, months in the planning, and with the nature of an open house, it, it's you know they're there to be challenged, to be questioned, to mm. share their thoughts. If they'd have not done it, based on everything that's happened with Tony and where we're at, then again, it's sort of it's counterproductive. So they couldn't really. I don't know. They can win. I think you know they've done the right thing by you know sort of keeping to the schedule and the commitment, but. Uh, 
yeah, I, th- I think they just uh, they're, they're not they're just not going to get away from the right here and now, and they'll be ready for that. I've got no doubt. I think they'll be well well drilled and well prepared. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty confident now that we're going to be okay. I'll be honest. Now we've got Gary Rabbit in. I don't think there's anybody better in the short term to to do that for us with the players we've got as well. Mm. You know, I think he's the way he plays. You know, the way he gets his teams to play will suit the players that we've got right now. And then talking longer term. I can really see Tony Mowbray taking us into the top half of the division, you know, in in, in the next sort of, uh, well, even next season, stroke the season after, you know, depending on what we can spend in the summer and making sure we get recruitment right and the right players in to play the way that we want to play. And obviously Mm. to be good enough as well to be in a team that's playing in the top 10, I'm going to say in the top 10, you know, in this division. Um, It's been a while since we've had a good top 10 finish. You know what I mean? It's been ages since we've even finished in the top half, isn't it? You know, and the last time was probably Ramit, wasn't it? When he yeah. his last season, so it's one of those really where, as ambition as it comes, really, I think that's the most realistic ambition we can expect in this current form of Blues, really, because it'd be great to think, yes, obviously next season we'll dust off the cobwebs and everything, and we'll get a top six finish or something like that. But I don't know, I just can't see that happening at the moment. And I mean, actually, I've just side point. I think Dan makes an interesting point though. It's like. Will Tony Mowbray appear at the open house or do a video uh, for it? Which I think would actually be a good lifter for the fan base as a club, you know. It'd be it'd be good to see for everybody to like he's doing okay, really, just like a short message or something like that to really see that people are doing well. It might just give them a little boost for the rest of the season, really. Uh, yeah, I, I Yeah, I'm, you know, personally with it, with obviously the situation with Tony, we don't know, and I, you know, I hope mm. he makes obviously the the recovery we all want, and he's he's there at the start of next season. It's just a massive unknown, and uh, we've just got to mm. just got to hope he gets better, and and you know whether he comes back and manages as long as he gets better, then then that's that's the answer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just uh, I think as you're saying, Paul, with with Gary, and again, I've got to give him a lot of credit for making that decision. It's all right, everyone's saying. Got it. He's got to go. You know, Venus isn't working out, but it still wasn't a huge. You know, it was enough games, but there was a lot that you know, we didn't get the rub of the green. I don't think we no. played appallingly. We weren't brilliant, but we didn't play appallingly. So I, I think there would have been a temptation to just maybe ride it out. I, I you know, I think they've made exactly the right decision. Um, now, am I confident? I'm as confident as I can be. Um, but again, I think the next two games are really gonna, you know, we we can put a marker down one way or the other. Um, and it's just whether have we got a better squad than last time he was here? Probably, I think we probably the spine probably isn't as good. Um, we, we're desperate at front, as we all know. Um, and I just we just got to make sure that I mean, is Bielik fit? Is he likely to be fit? It should be, yeah. His, his injury was only till the end of the March, so he should yeah. be fit. Because you know, you can you can certainly draw a line from this horrific run with his injury. I'm not saying it's all because of that, but it's just that steadying sort of just calms it all down. Whether he's playing mm. centre half or centre mid, and if we can have a Bielik and Sanders until the end of the season, I am ecstatic with that because I think Sanderson needs him. Um, yeah. So I, I think if he's got all the players fit, other than obviously Juki, as we said, it probably won't be. But I think if the rest of the squad are fit, I'd be really disappointed if he doesn't get a safe because I, th- I think he's better than he had before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. definitely. Uh, we will have a quick uh, preview of the QPR game right before and have a sponsor from our... I always mess this bit up after <laughs> a short break from our sponsors. This video is brought to you by Voxy, the pay-as-you-go mobile network that gives you unlimited social media for as little as £10 a month. Sign up today using the link in the description to stop eating your data away while on the move. Voxy has got you covered with unlimited social media, video and music, all with 5G ready in every Voxy plan. And you'll also get a free £20 PayPal, Just Eat or Amazon voucher. So be sure to sign up today. Now, back to the video. So the QPR game on Friday, uh, Easter, Friday, whatever it is, Good Friday, that's it. Um, I, oh. yeah, hopefully it will be a Good Friday. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, with, with obviously recent form that we're going into this game and obviously QPR have been picking up a few decent results here and there. 
Uh, I'll come to you, John, first. What do you think to the uh, game on Friday? Um, it's, it's just difficult. It's difficult because we've had so many different styles of football this season. Um, I think we can pretty much nail down what Rowett's going to try and do. Um, mm. You know, if we get 30% possession, I think we'll all be happy. Um, but I'm, I'm here for it. I, I don't mind it. As I said, I've really enjoyed his team. It was an honest team. It was a fair, you know, in contrast to a lot of other managers, it was a, su a successful team. Um, I think he relies heavily on fullbacks, and I think we've got some brilliant fullbacks. Um, you know, th there's always that sort of early channel ball that Caddis, I can just see him playing it now. You know, just no messing, get it in the mm -hmm. channel. I don't know, it's not necessarily popular right now, but. You know, we, we're not going to we're not going to be knocking it around. We, you know, we've certainly we've certainly proved that we can't do it consistently. We can do it in spots, but you know, we, this has got to be ninety minutes of football. Um, you know what? Uh, I, I I know you say it won't be popular. I think it will be massively popular at this point in the season because no, no, we've been drained from all this possession. No, uh, yeah, I I just think from a. I think if you if you had a straw poll of ten people out of them want football to be played, they'd all be saying, "Well, you know the the sort of Man City style." Perhaps, so I think, yeah. I think popular in context of football, but mm -hmm. I'm totally with you. I cannot mm -hmm. wait to see eleven Blues players going at it, by properly going at it, and we just such a good, every over the last two seasons when we high press with energy consistently, we're a cracking team. Mm -hmm. We I, I genuinely believe that you know. But we just don't do it consistently. We'll do it for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or take 10 minutes off and then just revert into a low block and invite people on. And we're awful at that. So I just think, you know, I, I look, we need we need something out of the game. I'm not going to sit here and say, it's it, you know, we're going to walk all over them because I, I just don't think that's the case. They're down there. They've been getting results. I think we're going to be bang up for it because I think that's Gary's, that's one of his strengths. Um and, and as I said before, I, I think we've got the players. My only worry is, you know, we haven't got that target man that he always ha he's always relied on with the style of football he plays. Um, I don't want him to do square pegs round holes and just find somebody that's relatively big and just drip him up top. You know, it's time for a junior Dixon. I've been saying it for the last three months. Um, and it's all right saying it's levels and he's only scored in this. But we're not scoring anyway. So we can't do any worse because none, okay. none, none of us. So he cannot do any worse, and he'll be absolutely up for it. And um, we've got a few steady eddies in the team. You know whether it'd be interested in that midfield. You know, um, you know Pike, uh, Dizel, um those those type of players that will try and get it down and play, or is he just going to go? completely shut up shop and put a Bakuna and a James in or whatever. That's the unknown. Mm. I don't know. I, gut feel. Bakuna, um, Sunich has got a bit of Kifton belt about him. Not as good as a footballer, but just that just a, a non-stop engine. I'd be surprised if he doesn't play because he's definitely yeah. a round player. Um, yeah. and, no, and nothing goes through the middle of the park with Rowett at all. No. Apart, apart from Carnage. So, who, do you uh, think, who do you think will be like his key player to use in the team? I, I think Laird's got a big, big part to play in it. I think he's got mm. a huge personality. I think he's got a ton of talent. I think he needs reining in a little bit. Um, I think Raul will give him the focus. Both play the same position. I think mm. he'll look to give him that sort of a bit of magic dust. I think Sanderson's got. He's got to step up. He's got. For me, he's still got a bit to prove. Um, again, if he can get a tune out of the defenders, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, and you know Stansfield, he's he's a he's a talent. You know he's he's going to be looking to the players that can make a difference. And luckily we've we've got some of those. You never know what Dembele might have done over the last ten days. You know if he's really sort of stood out and he wants to give him a shot, then again you know the, he he always Gary's had some good wide players in Blues teams in the past, like that have got a bit of talent and a bit of skill that will try and do things. Outside the danger areas, use their skill and take people on, which is a bit sort of low risk. But that, as I said, that's Gary. So, again, he's got players like that. Um, so, I, I think Laird, for me, is a bit of a no-brainer. Um, I think I think drama has been unbelievable as well, you know. I, I think he's been so solid. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's the people with the magic dust that are going to make the difference. Um, 
but he, I think he's still going to lean on players that are going to give him a solid eight and a half out of ten every single game. Um, but the reality is, and it's a bit of a cliche, this has got to be a collective. That's the only way we're getting out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a big thing for me is that uh, we don't see Jordan James on the left again and we see him in the middle. Yeah. Um, you know, and I want to see him in. I think I think he's his best because in the short time Rooney was there, the best thing he did was play Jordan James in that ten behind Stats. Yeah, he was probably he did, yeah. Away, wasn't it? So um, I'd like to see that again. Um, and like you say, John, if you can get a tune out of Dembele on the left and maybe Miyoshi on the right, that could be a good front three. You know, um, behind Stansfield, um, and then you want probably a Bielik and a, a Sunich to play in front of the back four, don't you? I would say in, in more in Rabbit style of football rather than maybe a a, a, a Pike and a and a, and a Dizal, you know, but who knows? We'll see. We'll I, do, see I just think, I yeah. think the worry is if you take Bielik out of centre half, I mean, Buchanan, in fairness to him, I think he's done all right. He had a yeah, bit of a stinker I'll, against I'll, Southampton, but other yeah. than that, I think he's been pretty solid. Yeah. We just there, but when we get beyond that, we're into danger, danger names. Hey, we're in Roberts. I mean, I, you know, my, my confidence. I have been impressed with him, though. I mean, well, not Tyler Roberts. Your no, friend Mark of mine. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 can't, he can't do it again. He can't see off another manager. So, you know, if we've got Sanderson and Bielik and then uh, Sunjic and, I don't know, whoever else, I think Jordan James could do a job as a CDM. Just just run about. Just, yeah. just you know, just get your foot in. Because um, those positions for Rabbit don't really contribute a lot. Everything is wide or everything's long down the middle. And as long as he's got players to fill those positions that can can do something a bit different, then I think he'll be happy. Yeah, because I, I really like Buchanan at centre-back. You know, obviously it gives us that balance being left-footed. And uh, I think Drama and Laird are both too good to be left out as well, you know. So, mm. definitely... Yeah. Just- yeah, I'd be happy with that. I think I think you know Buchanan and Sanderson as, as centre halves, yeah. and uh, Sunjic and Bielik in that holding pattern. I think that's it's solid, isn't it? It's solid. Yeah. It's just what yeah. what else what else around it. Um, yeah, I guess time will tell. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's I think that. Yeah, sorry, Tommy. That's right. It's right. Uh, I I think the most important thing because I agree with both you guys. Actually, I feel like whichever one we play out of the two will be fine. Uh, it just it, the, the, like attacking wise though we just need to be a bit more ruthless which we haven't been all season and um, we we showed it against Leicester but we just lacked the quality to score didn't we away you know we had all the chances in on goal we just could not find the back of the net but whereas like in more recent games and pretty much all throughout the season we just haven't pulled the trigger at the most important time and we've been okay defensively we've had a bit of a lull in recent games but we haven't been like shockingly bad though we've just been bad going forward really and that's where that needs to change really because i agree that that back both of your back fours i think sound pretty sound really really i just don't feel like we're very dangerous going forward anymore which we we were before rooney came in and we were when we were you know having that first good spell with mowbray as well so i think that's the only thing that i would like to see in terms of the team but yeah i don't know what what what, what score predictions you're going for then I think we can nick it. I think we can nick it at QPR. I think we can get a, a two-one maybe. I'll go for a two-one. Mm. Yeah, score is wise. I think Stansfield will get one, and Jordan. James, I'll go for Jordan James as well. Mm. Yeah, but I think it, I, uh, brave man to say we're going to keep a clean sheet because I just can't see it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a 2-1 2-1 no, I, I think I, 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 for this one I'll take a point I think just a good mm. performance take a point to take into the next game but I wouldn't pass put it past Gary to shit house 1-0 and walk away with three points I could I could definitely see that mm. stink it, it out 30, 30% possession well I remember his first game for Blues when he first got put in charge was a 0-0 away at Wolves and that was a solid performance, wasn't it? Because we've yeah. just been off the back of that 8 0 against Bournemouth. And then to get a 0 0 away at Wolves is like, it's, it's much better already. That is. I mean, we won yeah. against Watford then, who were top of the table. So yeah. the, the, the performances, I'm, I'm certain that he can definitely pull off a similar trick that he did last time. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that he might not struggle with, but it's a fact, there's a lot of players out of contract to the end of the season. Oh, an enormous amount. Uh, yeah. And it's like, what have they got? In the you know, have they got any ticker? Are they are they playing for their new? No, not necessarily with Blues, but playing for a move. You know, they need another club. Mm. But a lot of those players, 
they're not they're not going to be a load of clubs knocking on the door to to sign him up. So again, that's that's an interesting dynamic. Can he rely on players? What desire is there? They might have to show on the training ground, but it'll be interesting after twenty minutes of uh, you know competitive football if they've actually got the desire to just play for the next eight games and, and keep the get, get get the club to a point where we can stay in the league, knowing they're not going to be there because there's a few. I probably wouldn't even have in the squad. I, well, I mean, we, I, we, Christ, we've been going for an hour, so I'm not even going to get into Hogan, but I wouldn't even have him in the squad. It's pointless. It's absolutely yeah. pointless. He could have been such a good player for us, and at times he has been, but Scott Hogan isn't the answer for the next eight games <clears throat> for me. He just isn't. Mm. Um, I would rather, I would rather, as said, a junior Dixon or a Donovan or somebody that's just, they've got a contract, their future's at the club, we're in it, just play without a bit of fear. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a few that would stink it out for me, and uh, I, what you mean, yeah. I don't think you can rely on them. Mm. No, no, it's a big ass though, isn't it, for a kid to be thrown into a relegation scrap for his professional debut? Yeah, well, I'm not so I'm not necessarily saying he starts, but I, but I think they've got that, you know, that energy. Mm -hmm. Twenty minutes to go, where yep. if it's if it's level or we need something or whatever it may be, I just think that. Again, I think it's a collective. If you can weed out the bad apples where you're saying, well, there's only eight games left. You haven't been playing anyway. I just don't see it. You're not you're not in my thinking. Again, that, that gives a collective feel. Um, th there's too many players that have had, oh, God, it's not even four, five, six chances. <clears throat> there's a few players in that squad have been through about eight managers. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's, it's, it's time to move on. But yeah. he'll know that. He's an experienced manager. And I, I think he'll be able to spot the bluffers. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. But, uh, as long as we get the win at QPR and then can beat Preston at home, you know, hopefully we can get maximum points. But at least four for me, at least four, and uh, then we can start to hopefully see ourselves pulling away from that uh, dreaded bottom three. You know. Yeah, it, it's it's a cup final every game now again, isn't it? Which is what relegation battles are like. We just we can't lose until the end of the season, and that's not going to happen. But that's how you guarantee your safety because we've got all the cards, we've got all the points to play for at the moment. You know, it, it it's still just within our hands at the moment. We've got like one goal better than uh, Huddersfield that sit below us. But if we can win on Saturday, uh, win on Friday, sorry, and then maybe get a point against Preston, who are pretty decent to be fair to them um i think we'll be okay really you know we just need to keep on consistently you know getting a point or getting a, just nicking a win or something like that so we need to do what we've been um um what we've been throwing away recently which is just one nil defeats really like a war we lost one nil to watford you know we can't be doing that we've got to be doing that to other teams you know we've got to be sticking it out right until the end and then trying to nick it when we can um which i thought we were going to do against millwall but then obviously we just Typical blows and very away, really. Um, yeah, well, I, I, Tommy, the one thing I would say this isn't a difficult run in. In my um, view, I'd put a line through Leicester. That's you know just anything's a bonus there. Yeah, true. Not, not Norwich at home. If he gets to the last game of the season, then you know what I mean, <laughs> it's trouble. Kill, yeah, kill me now. <laughs> I, I Send think, us down. I think the other six games. You know, I'd be disappointed if we don't get a point from all of those six. You know. Uh, Game by game, if we were doing a preview of each game, I would not be saying that we'd be losing to any of them. And, and you know, yeah. that's not because I'm an eternal optimist. I just don't think they're great sides. Um, yeah. I don't think we'll get anything out of Leicester. And I think if we have to get something at home against Norwich, you wouldn't back mm. against us of being at home and what it's going to mean. But they're sixth. And they're, if they've got nothing to play for, I, I take us to beat them. But if they're still potentially there or thereabouts in the top six, that's going to be a mm. tough one. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. I, I, I don't particularly rate this Championship uh, League either, really. I think in recent years, like, it's been really difficult because obviously like, teams like Leeds, Villa and those teams have been down in recent years. But like this one don't feel as difficult. I mean, obviously, Leicester is obviously they're going to pull away with the league eventually. But I don't know, the, the, some of the middle table teams, I mean, like it shows really with how tight the league is, you know, very, I think still from about where we are to about 12th, there's like two points between the whole difference really you know it's like it's an incredibly uh tight gap really not two points i've just realized how stupid that is actually it's about it's five about or six, six. yeah it's about five or six it's about two from where we are to about 16th i think so that it, it's very tight really within the 
league. So I, I agree. I don't think there are many standout teams aside from Leicester and maybe Leeds, you know, or, or Ipswich perhaps, you know. But like the, apart from that, the rest of the league is all fair play in my opinion. So Yeah, and it boils down to we've got, you know, if we play well, we'll get something because we've got a good enough squad to get something. If we, mm. if we, if we turn out and we're not up for it, then... Again, yeah, on the flip yeah. side of that, the sides are good enough to do a Millwall on us. Millwall are garbage. Yeah, yeah. they, they were poor against us. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, just all about being consistent, isn't it? Now, for me, I'm not bothered about the performance so much. You know, it's just about the result in it. And I'd rather win. I'd rather win ugly than 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 lose playing well. You know. Yeah, agreed. We've done that a lot this season, haven't we? We played well in a lot of games we lost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. I think under Rooney, like the football wasn't particularly that bad really it was a bit dull and dire at times but because of the way we were about the club at the time it was like it just added to it really but the, if you actually take the if you just strip everything away from the game itself I don't think the games themselves were really that bad it was just where it was in the season that really just added to it I don't really can see the difference with where we are at the moment either as well you know the performances haven't changed really since Rooney has left and we're still I, just I think that slump really well, I, I think my view is if we play well for an hour against Ipswich, that's it. We were absolutely mm. shocking, naive, mm. just devoid of anything, just def- just nothing, no method. And as soon as you got tight, Southampton away, where there's no fear football go then. It's the most defensive side I've seen picked since well, God knows when. So his arse went. So I, the, the, just. The difference is Eustace, I would put as a decent manager. I think he's still unproven. I don't think he's any more than that because he's only been doing it long enough. Mm. Mowbray is a very good manager. And that's where you saw a tune, a bit of proper trying to play football. And he'd actually have the gumption after the game to say, even when we won, yeah, still not happy with X, Y, and Z. That's a proper manager. So yeah. I'm hoping with Gary, we've got a proper manager. And this method to the madness, but yeah, I mean it, it, the the whole Rooney thing. Yeah, I, I, I've always said it. What motivation did he have to be successful? He earned more money in five seasons playing for United than we've spent on transfers in our history. There you yeah, go. it just it, it never clicked with Blues fans, did it? It was just never going to work. And yeah, I I, I feel like um I had a. Uh, I think me and my dad had a similar feeling when we were driving to the first game against Borough because we were feeling quite optimistic until that point. And then we were driving to Borough and I think it was Ashley Cole who gave an interview or something like that. And we both just felt, oh, I don't know about this now. It just suddenly feels all a bit, I don't want to say forced, but it's kind of the way I felt about it. It just felt, it didn't feel right all of a sudden. You know, I I felt the optimism from the idea of Rooney because if it worked, it would have been fantastic. But then... I'm starting to see the other additions to his coaching staff and I'm thinking oh, this might not be quite the right way going forward, which is obviously proven that way because the results have decreased and we are still in this situation even though he's gone. But I think, he's... you know, footballers are human beings. So when you watch Ray Rooney do a press conference, as a person, are you buying that? Because I know I'm not. So the players won't be, once you get past these in England legend and everything else, and you cut to the chase of he's there to do a job, am I going to follow him? Am I going to give absolutely everything for him the way that he comes across? Probably not. When Mowbray does, 100%. When Eustace did, even at pre-season when he was having him out for not you know, putting a shift in, and Rowett will do exactly the same because footballers are only like all of us and they will lead, they'll go and follow a leader that's actually got credibility. Exactly, and that's why yeah. I think we've got a decent chance. Rooney didn't have mm. it. He couldn't speak. <laughs> he didn't have the, I mean, like he, he, he's, he's definitely a nice guy. You know, I met him at the open house and he was a very nice guy, very considerate, but he just didn't give that leader vibes off. Like you're saying, you know, the people want competent leaders. I'm definitely saying Rooney's not a competent leader, but he definitely hasn't got that vibe around him where he's like <laughs> demanding your focus all the time. He's, It was just a bit too casual for me and perhaps the players saw through that and when they needed some real good guidance, they didn't really get that from them. You know, so I don't know. And uh, obviously it's all again, a little bit of speculation from that. But yeah, Yeah, it's one of those really. See Rooney getting another job as a manager? Who knows? You never know because there might be a time when Everton might need an interim manager and they think, well, we've gone through a different few managers. 
why not go for Wayne Rooney? He's had a couple of hard jobs in the championship, but it might just be the thing that spurs him on. Things like that happen, you know. I mean, like I remember Paul Lambert a couple of years ago. We're talking about 10 years ago probably now, but he had a terrible run of manager jobs and he somehow still got a good Premier League job out of the end of it. It's just like managers sometimes when they get worse, they somehow manage with a better job in the end. It's, it's, yeah. It baffles me sometimes, really. Mm. Mm. Be interesting yeah. As a, as a big England fan as well, you know, um, we've got some great young English players coming through now and you want the next crop of good young English managers as well, don't you? But it just doesn't seem to mm. have happened at all. You know, you can count on one hand now the decent English managers in the game, can't you? But, but the thing is, Paul, it's where you're looking. You know, Eustace, that was his, well, apart from Kiddy Arias, that was his first job. Yeah. And he did a bloody good job in impossible circumstances. So, yeah. it, again, it, and this is why... Boards make appointments by Rooney, like Rooney, because they get absolutely obsessed with the name and they're not yeah. actually interested in whether he can do the job or yeah. not. But there yeah. could be somebody. I mean, look at uh, Rooney's number two at Derby, um, Rossini. Yeah, yeah. He's done all right, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mm. He's done all right, hasn't he? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's not a massive name, but no. you know, he's so I think they're there. They just need to be given the chance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, and, they're, uh, they're 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that the idea with... I hate the I hate the idea anyway, really. Just like this sort of... I don't know what term it is, but it's it's sort of name-chasing mentality. I, I've never appealed to it, you know. I, I don't understand it really as well. It's it's It doesn't... It's, it's It just doesn't really appeal to me in a weird way. It's kind of like people who flush all their money on Instagram or stuff like that, you know. It's like, yeah, we know, you, we know you're Wayne Rooney and yeah, we know you've got all this money to this person on Instagram, but it's like, <clears throat> what are you going to do with that? You know, what are you actually doing that? But then we have Liam Rossini, who's not as big a name as Wayne Rooney, he's a better manager. So it's, it's, it's one of those, really. I think people need respect as a manager. And obviously, Wayne really can get all the respect as a footballer, you know, absolutely sensational player. Absolutely. But as a manager, you, you can't have that same respect that Liam Rossini has. But then people would argue, yeah, but Wayne Rooney was this player. It's like, no, 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 no. That Liam Rossini is this manager, you know, and so is all the other managers that have come, that are doing decent jobs as well, like Gary O'Neill, like... Um, his name's come from my head now. <laughs> Old Chelsea one, Graham Potter. There we go. I was, I was yeah, yeah. going to say who I actually was about to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. But the reality, yeah, yeah. reality is Rooney had more impact as a player this season than he did as a manager. Mm. He's still, he, he could have still done a job playing for us. Still did a job playing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You could, Eddie, you could even throw Eddie Howe's name in there as well. <laughs> he, wasn't a, he wasn't a fan. Exactly. Player. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's. I mean, the last English manager to actually win a trophy was Harry Redknapp at Portsmouth in two thousand and eight. That's just That's insane, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. Whilst we're uh, talking about Rooney, I think um, I think one last thing on Barrett though is the fact that the fans will be massively behind it all. Really, um, it, it just it just will it just will bring the fans back together, and particularly that first home game. I'm looking forward to now. I feel like um, we we can capitalise on something like that, and I'll be disappointed if we can't as well. Um, but obviously, QPR is next, so we need to focus on that first. And as a fan base and as individual fans, all we can do is hope that they're going to get a good result. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we've got time for, really, guys. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure for talking to you guys for about an hour now. Um, yeah. Be sure to uh, go and check out the Tilt and Talk show. Uh, Paul obviously has dropped in from there. Uh, great show. The guys run it every week. Um, We'll be sure to bring you guys back for more episodes. Obviously, John will be sure to bring you back as well. Um, it's been great chatting to you guys tonight. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined in on the chat. Sorry if we didn't read out as many questions as usual. I, um, I'm back at university, so my Wi-Fi isn't the best. It's been flickering in and out every now and then, so I've just been monitoring that. But it's been jumping about the screen as well, so you guys seem to be talking at times, and then I'm like, oh, oh wait, no. It's just oh, it's, it's been a bit of a mare, really. Um, but, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Up the blues. And see, and keep right on. Cheers.